In the beginning of the Gospel of John, when John tells the story of Jesus coming, he says that whenever Jesus came, it brought us grace upon grace. John 1 and verse 16 says, Of his fullness we have all received. And it depends on your translation. I like the ones that just say there was grace upon grace. Some say there was one gracious gift after another. The point is, Jesus is the real pathway to tapping into God's grace. He even makes a comparison. He says, you know, Moses provided some grace. Not really, though. It was really just the law. But it's in this context of grace. So there seems to be an implication that, yeah, yeah, Moses gave you something from God. But it wasn't the real, true, full grace of God. It's really whenever you tap into Jesus Christ that you can access the real grace of God, the full grace of God. So how do you do that? How do you come in and receive the fullness of God's grace? Or how do you come in and receive any meaningful deposit of God's grace? Even though every person experiences gifts from God in some measure of what we might call grace, it really doesn't mean anything unless you come in through Jesus Christ. Well, John says a really interesting thing, and he pairs the idea of grace with something else that I think a lot of times we wouldn't really think of as being critical to receiving God's grace. Look at what he says in John chapter 1, and verse 14. John 1 and verse 14. Speaking about Jesus, the pre-existent logos of God, the Word of God. It says, Now the Word became flesh and took up residence among us, or dwelt among us. He brought God's presence to us, which was an amazing grace. But listen to what John says you need if you want that presence to remain with you, if you want that presence of God to mean something to you. Here's what he says. The Word became flesh and took up residence among us, and we saw His glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth, who came from the Father. Again in verse 17, he says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came about through Jesus Christ. And no one has ever seen God, but the only one, himself God, who is in closest fellowship with the Father, has made God known. Do you hear what John is saying here? If you want to receive grace, it comes as a companion package with truth. Two times, he says, Jesus brought grace and truth. Not only does he say that it was grace and truth, but then at the end of verse 18, he said that Jesus has made God known. In other words, he didn't just slam us with grace or force us into grace. There's knowledge that's required in order to tap into the grace of God. This idea extends out in the book of Acts. Whenever after Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father and uh, the kingdom is initiated, look at what Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 says. Acts 4 and verse 33 it maybe moves away from the word truth, but the idea of revelation, of knowledge, of real true information being necessary for grace is right here. Look at this, Acts 4 and verse 33. This is speaking about how the apostles were continuing on the ministry that Jesus initiated. Acts 4 and verse 33, it says, With great power the apostles were giving testimony. They were speaking the truth. They were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Do you hear the implication of that? It doesn't say they all have had grace upon them. No, no, it says, hey, there was real true testimony given about the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that provided for them to be able to have grace from God. Look at chapter 14 of the book of Acts. Acts 14 and verse 3. Acts 14 and verse 3. This is another place where you see a similar idea. Acts 14 and verse 3 it says, so they stayed there for a considerable time, speaking out courageously. You might say, speaking the truth courageously. For the Lord, who testified to the message of His grace. The message of His grace. It wasn't just a feeling of grace. It wasn't just forgiveness by grace. But there was truth. There was a message. There was a reality people didn't understand. Look at one more in Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Acts 20 and verse 24. This is Paul speaking about the work that he did, recounting it to people who knew him. And he says in Acts 20 verse 24, I do not consider my life worth anything to myself, so that I may finish my task and my ministry that I received from the Lord. Well, what was that, Paul? What was the task and the ministry that you received from the Lord? To testify to the good news of God's grace. 
to testify to the good news of God's grace. All right, do you hear what this is? all these passages are saying to us? If you want to receive grace from God, it only comes through the truth of God. All right, here's a couple of applications for you. If you want to receive grace, you need to be picking up your Bible and reading it. You're never going to experience any real grace from God. You're never going to have forgiveness of your sins. You're never going to live a righteous life that opens you up to God's presence. You're never going to have peace and joy, anything. You're never going to have it if you don't open up your Bible so that you can understand the way God thinks and what grace even is and how God will deliver it to you and all that sort of stuff. You've got to open up your Bible and read about the good news that's been testified throughout the centuries to teach us about God's grace. You need to read your Bible. Here's another thing. Um, some of you out there, you want your life to be great, but anytime someone challenges you with a truth, you get offended, you get hurt, you get, uh, how dare you, that, that's, not, that's not very kind. What you told me, that doesn't make me feel very good. Well, <laughs> it doesn't say grace and things that make you feel good. It says grace and truth. It says the good news of Jesus' resurrection, which, by the way, means that he's the judge of heaven and earth. That's the message that they told, was that Jesus would come back to judge all humankind, that in the end he would punish evildoers. That is not a very sweet message. It doesn't make you feel good, but it's necessary to understand so that you can recalibrate your life to receive the grace of God. And too many of us get our feelings hurt whenever someone tells us something that's true, and then we wonder why there's no grace upon us, why we're living a... a tumultuous life where God feels far away because he is far away. It's because you're not receiving the truth. You're never going to experience God's grace apart from his truth. And when you dive into his truth, maybe the third application here besides actually opening up and reading it, number two, receiving exhortation from people, but number three, look for grace. Look for grace even in the hard things. Look for grace in the parts of Scripture that kind of don't make sense to you. Try to figure out how does this lead me closer to God? How does this make me recalibrate my life to where I'll match up with God so that His grace can pour into me and actually make a difference and change me and fill me? Because the way you'll tap into the grace of God is only by the truth. And so here's a parting word from the Apostle Paul for each and every one of us. When he spoke to that same group of people where he said, hey, my ministry was to testify the good news of God's grace. In Acts 20 and verse 32, at the end of that conversation, he says, and now I entrust you to God and to the message of his grace. This message, this truth, that sometimes is hard, but it ultimately leads you to grace, and itself is a grace, actually. This message is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. May God help us to seek his grace by learning, knowing, trusting, and submitting to his truth so that we'll be built up with all those who are seeking after God.